Item number SCP-6095, Security Level 3, Containment Class Safe, Disruption Class Dark, Risk Class Caution, Special Containment Procedures, SCP-6095 is to be stored in the Standard Containment Chamber at Site-19. On a bi-weekly basis, any existing non-anonymous inorganic matter is to be disposed of. Description SCP-6095 is a 2 meter tall wooden sculpture depicting a humanoid figure of indeterminate sex with physical features of the Cyberday or Leverday families, commonly referred to as deer and rabbit respectively. The object appears to exhibit non-sentient autonomy, remaining stationary and incapable of vocalization in its current form. A command line terminal, henceforth SCP-1695-A, is installed on the back of the object and is fully functional. Typing exclamation help into SCP-1695-A and pressing the enter key presents a list of commands utilized in the operation of the machine, most of which present a use in the modification of various parts of the user's body by unknown processors. Repeated utilization of the object results in outcomes that diverge from the initially desired modification, typically culminating in sections of the user's body converting into various types of naturally occurring inorganic matter and plant life. Examples of materials created by SCP-1695-A include soil, foliage, gravel, and various types of moss. SCP-1695 is capable of reacting to the operation of SCP-1695-A, frequently discharging a fluid visually similar to water from its eyes despite the apparent lack of dead tucks carved into the object. This effect is most commonly observed when used for the purpose of body modification and often result in the user seeking to appease the object. This may either take the form of the user simply ceasing to use the object, or voluntarily utilizing it to convert 100% of the body mass into inorganic material. SCP-1695 was recovered from an MCND warehouse by MTF Mu-3 High Spitters on the 15th of August, 2006. The object was accompanied by an owner's manual that suggested a history of use dating back to 1994, as well as physical evidence suggesting a history of tampering with the object beforehand. Experiment Log 1695-1 Date 9th of March 2007 Test Subject D37693 Desired Modification Monoplasty Result over a period of roughly 10 minutes, results manifested successfully in the subject with no complications or side effects. Discharge from SCP-1695 followed promptly afterward. As of the 22nd of March, 2007, D-37693 has expressed an aversion to cosmetic use of SCP-1695-A, suggesting that it needs its space. Date, 9th of March, 2007. Test subject, D-77842. Desired modification, a height increase of 12 centimeters, accompanied by an increase in overall muscle mass. Result, following a period of 33 minutes, a height increase of 11.5 centimeters was observed, as well as discharge from the object. An increase in the subject's muscle mass was not apparent. DE-77842 expressed remorse as a result of their use of this object, stating, I don't want people around me at the moment. Addendum 5th of January 2008 Following a consensus reached by the administration, entry into SCP-1695's containment chamber for any purpose is strictly prohibited. Any opposition to this alteration to the containment procedures will be met with revoked clearance. Article updated as of 
20th of March, 2008. Click here to view the newest iteration. Item number SCP-1695 Security Level 4 Containment Class Keter Secondary Class Mehmet Disruption Class Kenick Risk Class Warning Special Containment Procedures SCP-1695 is currently self-containing Following the events of Incident Report 1695-1, SCP-1695 is to be kept in a humanoid containment chamber 11.5 kilometers under Site-43, and any interaction between the object and all forms of sentient fauna is prohibited unless absolutely necessary. A singular individual from an SCP-1695-B instance is to remain present within the containment chamber as a means of indirect communication with the object. When it is necessary to be within 10 kilometers of SCP-1695, all personnel are to be amnesticized following interaction to enable long-distance communication. A video camera with an attached microphone is to be affixed to the wall above the entrance. Sustenance is to be provided to the present SCP-1695-B individual using on-site machinery. Any newly observed anomalous properties are to be taken note of and containment procedures are to be adjusted accordingly. Description SCP-1695 is a two-meter-tall wooden sculpture depicting a humanoid figure of indeterminate sex with physical features of the Seventh Day and Lower Day families, commonly referred to as deer and rabbit, respectively. The object exhibits intelligence consistent with Homo sapiens sapiens, yet remains stationary and does not possess the ability of direct communication. A command line terminal, henceforth, SCP-1695-A is installed on the back of the object and is fully functional. Typing exclamation help into SCP-1695-A and pressing the enter key presents a list of commands utilized in the operation of the machine, most of which present a use in the modification of various parts of the user's body by unknown processes. Repeated utilization of the object results in outcomes that diverge from the initially desired modification, typically culminating in sections of the user's body converting into various types of naturally occurring inorganic matter and plant life. Note. Examples of materials created by SCP-1695-A include soil, foliage, gravel, and various types of moss. SCP-1695 is capable of reacting to the operation of SCP-1695-A, frequently discharging a fluid visually similar to water from its eyes, despite the apparent lack of tear ducts carved into the object. This effect is most commonly observed when used for the purpose of body modification, and often results in the user seeking to appease the object. This may either take the form of the user simply ceasing to use the object, or voluntarily utilizing it to convert 100% of the body mass into inorganic material. SCP-1695 is capable of a cognitohazardous effect wherein it partially surpasses the consciousness of sentient fauna within a 10 km radius, creating a gestalt consciousness hereby referred to as SCP-1695-B. This effect has been observed to spread at an exponential rate to nearby sentient life. The object typically utilizes human SCP-1695-B individuals for the purpose of communication and typically disposes of an instance, referred to Incident Report 1695-1, after it finds that it has no practical use. SCP-1695 was recovered from an MCND warehouse by MTF Mu-3, highest bidders, on the 15th of August, 2006, the object was accompanied by an owner's menu that suggested a history of use dating back to 1994, 
as well as physical evidence suggesting a history of tampering with the object beforehand. Information gathered from a previous SCP-1695-B instance suggests that the object was modified by MCND specifically for the purpose of body modification, and that it wasn't capable of this use beforehand. Incident Report 1695-1 On the 22nd of January 2008, a professional mobile task force was assembled following 16 days of radio silence from Site-19. Upon their arrival, several anomalies had reached containment and several personnel were reported missing. Various flora occupied approximately 67% of hallways and containment chambers on site. MTF Epsilon 11 Nine-Tailed Fox was sent in and five days of extensive re-containment efforts followed. Following the incident, an interview was conducted by Dr. Lawrence Henry with SCP-1695. Interview Log 1695-A Interviewed SCP-1695 Interviewer Dr. Lawrence Henry Forward SCP-1695 is using a remaining individual of an SCP-1695-B instance to communicate. The interview is being conducted remotely from a distance of 22 kilometers. Begin log. Good morning, SCP-1695. I would like to ask a few questions following the events of last week. Firstly, what does that number mean? It is a designation you have been given for the sake of reference. The number itself doesn't necessarily mean anything significant. Make this quick. Very good. Uh, firstly, how long have you been capable of advanced intelligence? I think I've been this way for almost 15 years, and I don't know how to adapt to this. I still haven't, truthfully. I used to just be a normal animal that lived peacefully without any of these concerns. But one day, I suppose it had to end. And I was grabbed by some men in suits and subjected to, uh, just a horrible process that I can't even begin to describe. Very interesting. What were your motivations behind the event that transpired last week? You know, for the past 14 years, I've been trying to understand and adapt to these new thoughts and feelings I've been having. And I haven't had a chance to do that. Because all I've known are people who want to use me to fix a superficial feature about themselves, and it hurts. I miss my family. I don't even know half the words coming out of this person's mouth. These are just the faculties I found, and I suppose they're relatively effective. But pardon me if I don't understand a question you're asking. Just... What's the next one, please? Is this ability of yours something you recently acquired? Things have gotten no better since I was locked up by you people. It's even worse, I'd argue. Somehow you've found people who are even more vain than I'm used to, and for some reason I had to be exposed to them way more often than I thought I ever could be. The worst part is that I can never do anything about it. Transparent liquid begins to discharge from SCP-1695. I just want to go back. It's almost like they knew what suffering they were putting me through. They made me look like this. And I just hate it so much. I want you to go away. So I will summarize. I'm not sure. I guess I just want to be left alone badly enough that I could suddenly make people cater to that desire. I wanted to be reminded of the landscape I once lived in, so I attempted to be decorative about their disposal. That concludes the interview. Thank you for your time. End log. Closing Statement SCP-1695 has been deemed self-containing and is capable of manifesting anomalous properties at will. Following the interview, 
Dr. Henry voiced a concern with the ethics of the current containment procedures. Instead of proposing the relocation of SCP-1695 above ground, this proposal was denied. Listen, I know the Foundation is currently concerned with reducing the likelihood of this object's acquisition by Marshall Carter and Doc, but we have to consider the ethical implications of taking what is essentially a human being with thoughts and feelings and spending millions of dollars to dig what is probably the second deepest man-made hole on the planet just to hide it from a rival organization. Can we at least allow it to be in its natural habitat? We could construct a dome that covers the radius of its enormous effects and stick it in Wyoming, where nobody is likely to stumble upon it. It's a much more ethical solution, and likely would have been way less expensive if we have gone with it in the first place. Dr. Lawrence Henry